for a new to another. My name is Jamie. Today we're going to be taking a comparison look of the M2 MacBook Pro as well as the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2. Now both of these devices are powerhouses in their own category and I'm a huge fan of both their build as well as their design. And the leading factor that we are comparing these two particular models, they do start with the same starting price tag of $2,000. Now I try not to harp on price too much because I know it can vary based on your location, taxes. You might even find a pretty good deal on the refurbished market, but when it comes to a premium laptop experience, both of these devices are in the same market. And in fact, the specs of the base models are also very similar, both coming with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of internal storage. Where they differ, however, is that the M2 MacBook Pro does come equipped with the M2 Pro chip. So the 16 gigabytes of memory are actually unified memory and it's shared between the CPU as well as the GPU. Over on the Surface Laptop Studio 2, that however is equipped with the 13th gen Intel Core i7 processor and it does have a dedicated graphics card and it's also powered by Intel and it's the Intel Iris Axie. And the internet does get a little opinionated on whether having a dedicated or unified GPU is better. I'm not here to spark debates, but I will say that the Surface Laptop Studio 2 is twice as powerful than the first generation, where the M2 MacBook Pro is only about 20% faster than the M1 model and that's only at certain task. Additionally, over on the Surface, that 512 base storage is self-upgradable. And myself, I still think you should have a professional take care of that. But over the M2 MacBook Pro, what you see is what you get. You cannot upgrade that in the future. And just for fun, both of these devices can be specced up even further. With the Mac coming in with a whopping 96 gigabytes of unified memory and eight terabytes of internal storage. That's terabytes with a TV. That's absolutely crazy. And over on the Surface, the Mac spec is 64 four gigabytes of RAM, two terabytes of internal storage, and a dedicated graphics card that is powered by NVIDIA, and it's the NVIDIA RTX 4060. And once you get over that initial sticker shock, I know that those prices can be very intimidating, but just note that those devices are intended for a very small pocket of people, and you should feel pretty comfortable picking up the base model of both of these devices, maybe upgrading a spec or two. Every workflow is unique, so it's very important to understand yours, and a certain workflow might also require a certain operating system. Naturally, as far as operating systems, we have Mac OS as well as Windows. It's a pretty good idea to have an understanding if a specific app you're going to need for your work or for your school is available on your intended device. Large developers are likely to have apps for both operating systems, but if you are working in a niche field, definitely worth the double checking. I remember when I was a student, I needed specific virtual machines and they weren't available in the M series of chips. So I had to have both devices, a Mac OS device and a Windows device in order to complete my course. However, if you are a student picking up either of these devices, I'm certainly jealous because in my opinion, these are more geared for creators. I know creators is a very broad term. It could be illustrator, video editor, photographer, or even a designer, because those types of software and file sizes require a lot of power that both of these machines can deliver. As an example, I do edit these videos in Final Cut Pro, which is a Mac only app. And I've also invested a lot of money on assets, LUTs, these graphics that you see. If you're curious of what they are, I will link them down below the like button, but it's what's really holding me back from going to a Windows only workflow. I I would have to reinvest in those things. I would have to learn new software and I don't have time for that, which is why I've always decided to live in both worlds, Mac OS as well as Windows. But enough about operating systems. Typically what people like to talk about is the build, the form, the amazing engineering that goes behind both of these computers. And both are enclosed entirely in aluminum, which feels absolutely great to hold. So you're not gonna find any plastics or fabric on either. The Laptop Studio 2 has a slightly larger footprint as it has a 14.4 inch display over the 14 inch that's found in the MacBook, but it doesn't feel so cumbersome on your lap or a table like a 16 inch laptop would. The surface is super unique, so I do look past a couple of these things, but it is worth mentioning because you may not. It is slightly chunkier and heavier than the MacBook, and again, it's due to the fact that its unique design allows it to have three viewing angles. You have your laptop mode for traditional use, stage mode for consuming content or gaming, and studio mode for creating illustrations or note taking. It's super cool. And part of this extra chunk that makes this possible is the dynamic woven hinge. There's also extra space that separates the body of the laptop from the fans, which visually looks unique, but in surface fashion, it's also functional, as this is where you could actually store and 
Charger Slim Pen 2. The pen stays, doesn't wiggle, or fall out of place, so totally reliable. A lot less to say on the MacBook side of things, it's just your standard laptop design, which isn't a bad thing. The corners are slightly rounded as well as the bottom, so it is more forgiving on your hands if you are holding it for an extended period of time. It does come in two color finishes, it has space gray, and they both come in this color matching silver. The MacBook Pro does have internal fans, but they're a little less visible as they blow out air from the hinge of the laptop just above the keyboard, as well as two slits on the side. Fans are a little bit more noticeable on their surface sides that they are below the raised edges on the left and right side. And if you are a PC mouse gamer, you'll probably feel this heat, then it could become uncomfortable for a long period of time. If you are a controller gamer, you probably won't notice it or feel it. But I did think it was important enough to mention. Pretty standard stuff on the MacBook Pro side of things, but considering the design from the 2018 model, it's a pretty good idea they've gone back to basics. And I'm pleased to share that both devices have a good selection worth of ports. Again, I think creatives will appreciate this more than those who aren't consistently plugging in drives or other accessories to their laptop. Both the machines also have their own version of safe magnetic charging. So if you were to be at a coffee shop or at work and somewhere were to trip over the cord, your computer, your laptop would stay in place. Now, personally, I prefer to charge USB-C all of the things, so I don't use this on either of these devices, but this is useful for the reasons that I just stated, or if you do need to use the USB-C ports for other reasons. These are Thunderbolt 4 ports on both of these machines, which is very pro. We have three on the mat and two on the Surface. The Surface does, however, have a USB-A to compensate. As for SD card readers, you do have a full-size SD card slot on the MacBook Pro and micro SD card slot on the Surface. Do with that information of what you will. Both have headphone jacks and the MacBook Pro does have the additional bonus of having an HDMI port. Never actually use mine since the USB-C does tend to cover this for my personal use cases, but I'd rather have it there than not. Now let's go ahead and discuss the displays themselves. But actually before we do, because it's probably my favorite part about both of these devices, if you are still listening to me, go ahead and hit that like button. Down in the comments, maybe even drop your favorite emoji. Even if you don't subscribe, which you probably should, that'll help get this video to even more screens because that's probably what's going to be the biggest differentiator aside from the operating system are their displays. I go into this a lot more in the dedicated video of this laptop so if you haven't seen it be sure to watch it at the end of this one but we have our standard laptop mode which is the only mode on the MacBook Pro. We have stage mode which is great for gaming or viewing content at that nice 45 degree angle or studio mode for illustrators, note taking, or those more tablet oriented applications. Again, all of this is made possible by the dynamic woven hinge. As for size, this is a 14 inch liquid retina exterior display, but the Mac is also available at 16 inches, where the surface is only available at 14.4 inches, but it is a pixel sense touch display. You do have double the brightness over in the MacBook with 1000 nits versus 500, but both provide great color accuracy. I personally always feel more comfortable adding my photos and videos on a Mac because most people view their Instagram or YouTube content on a smartphone, but the colors on the surface are just as vivid. The surface is a 3 by 2 aspect ratio with no notch like on the MacBook, but the bezels are slightly thicker. And I think that's a good compromise considering you are given the option of using this touch display for tablet purposes. And if you don't have anywhere to put your thumb, you may accidentally select and press something unintended. But I told you there were a lot to say about these displays as they both put out 120 hertz for the refresh rate. Right? My dedicated video, I did see a lot of hate on the display of the surface being a little laggy. I do think that was the first generation because I have not experienced this and I've used it to play Halo, edit photos in Lightroom, and of course, watch a lot of YouTube. But it's just not a thing. Again, you gotta keep in mind that this is twice as powerful as that first generation model. Both gorgeous displays, but you could accomplish a lot more creatively with the Surface if you are a hybrid creator. Both have a great typing and trackpad experience with good haptics and backlight keys. I do recommend that you update the sensitivity of the trackpad on the Surface because out of the box, it is a little slow, but after that, you should be good. I do prefer the size of the trackpad on the MacBook, however, because I do think the Surface missed out on some of this key real estate right there in the middle. The MacBook Pro does use Touch ID as a secure authentication method, while the Surface uses Windows Hello for seamless slide on using that front facing camera. The front facing camera is probably a good place to go to next as they both have a 1080p front facing webcam or their own version of technology to help improve the image as well as keeping you in the frame while on calls. I'll go ahead and let you decide which looks and sound better using those internal mics as well as camera.
And this is the test of the MacBook Pro camera as well as microphone without any of my studio lights. It's all just natural lighting. And we have now jumped over to the Surface Laptop Studio too. And just keep in mind that a lot of features like auto framing is gonna depend on the platform that you're working on. So whether it's Teams, Zoom, Google Meets, it's gonna depend on that. Speaker quality on both are great. This might just be in my head, but I do think the speakers on the MacBook Pro do sound a little crisper. This may just be psychological because there are speaker grills on the MacBook Pro with the Surface does not. But that's not to discredit it. Again, watched plenty of content, played a lot of games, and the Quad Omni Dolby Ambo speakers on the Surface sound great. They get plenty loud, and not just for the sake of being loud, but I don't know. Apple is just known for their audio, and there really is something really special about these speakers and whatever software magic that they work in with that spatial audio, which that may be it, the spatial audio, because I do primarily just use Apple Music. But we have six speakers, four speakers. I'd play something for you guys, but between the microphone on the camera, the editing, YouTube and whatever speakers you're actually actively listening to this on, it wouldn't do either of these speakers any justice. Both devices declare all day battery life, but of course that depends on what you're doing and which device you actually get. The 14 inch M2 Pro devices and the base Surface claim around 18 to 19 hours. Listen, both are great, but I've been using the Surface all day for work. I typically don't deliberately leave my computer unplugged, but I did a couple weeks ago for the sake of this review and it did last me all day with the brightness at a 100% and the battle keys turned on. The MacBook Pro, when I do use it for extended periods of time, which is typically on the weekends to edit these videos, does get me around all day battery life as well. And that's using Final Cut Pro, which is much more demanding than the Microsoft suite. But I do think Microsoft developers have been doing a lot of work under the hood, optimizing their software, because I've noticed a lot of improvements in battery life. And for my gamers out there, now neither of these are particularly gaming laptops, but they do have games available if you are traveling on a plane and you need some to do. There are dedicated videos out there for best games on a Mac, but just be aware that they are limited. But it's great seeing full title games like Resident Evil coming to the Mac, and hopefully there will be more. The Surface does have a larger selection. The Xbox Game Pass games run pretty well. Halo runs smooth, but Horizon on Steam did not. Definitely up the graphics card if you do intend to use the device for gaming, but at least the collection is a lot larger. But of course, there are a lot more numbers in specs, so go ahead and flash them up on the screen. There's no need to hear me regurgitate them, but I did do the research, so there it is. Basically, like I say in all my comparison videos, it's ultimately up for you to decide. I wouldn't use either, in fact, any tech product if it wasn't reliable or brought value to my work. Also, like I stated in the very beginning, Ultimately, it's going to come down to the operating system. But if you have no limitations, you can't go wrong with either. However, if you are looking for a deal, you could always bump down to the base M1 MacBook Pro model and still be solid. Hardware is basically the same, and you're not really going to notice a difference in performance. But I would not recommend you bump down to the first generation laptop Surface Studio because it's twice the performance and it's actually noticeable. In fact, I would still even recommend you go up one spec so that you could get that dedicated NVIDIA graphics card. Again, budgets will vary, and I do want to thank you for budgeting your time and making it all the way to the end of this video. Go ahead and drop your questions, comments, or just say hello down below the like button. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, see ya.